In this video, I'm going to be going through the example of using a Google Sheets form and spreadsheet to create integrated rate law data and then create a plot using that in order to determine which set of data creates a linear relationship. So I've written the assignment with the objectives, a summary of integrated rate law data and I put information in. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to open up Google Sheets. And I'm going to create a new spreadsheet. And I've typed in all of the directions on how to do this. But before I show the directions, I'm just going to go ahead and type in <clears throat> the information. And so you have to put in the headings in order to keep track of this information. So I'm going to just copy the heading over into the spreadsheet. So I've got the time data and then the brackets mean the molarity and the chemical is inside. Um, doesn't do subscripts very well, so it just is written as C4H8. So that's cyclohexane or cyclobutene. And so we have our data and I'm just going to start typing in that data for the time. Then I'm going to type in the data for the concentration. And one thing that you'll notice when you type the data in is if there is a decimal, when you first type in the data, it will get rid of it. With Google Sheets, it's very easy to increase the number of decimals. And so if you look up here, this decreases the number of decimal places and this increases it. And so if you just click this one time, then you'll see a point zero, which in chemistry is important. And so this will allow you to control the number of decimals that you have. And so in the directions on what to do with this example, we want to input the data, create a graph of time versus concentration, graph the data to determine its order, to graph as if it's first order, that's time versus the natural log of the chemical to graph as if it's second order, it's time versus the inverse of the concentration of the chemical. So on the next page, I have the directions on how to put the data in and then mathematically alter it. And so the first thing that I'm going to do with the data to kind of help line it up is I'm going to go and change it so that it is centered and so if you go to format for alignment if you go down you can see that center is one of the choices so we can center the data okay so create the headings for your data so time is the first one and then the chemical in brackets is the second one the third one would be ln so in this column, it's going to be natural log of the chemical, which is C4H8. That goes in that column. And then the last column is one divided by, and then the chemical in brackets. Directions are generic, but for this, the chemical specifically is c 4 H8. OK. And so input the data, column A and then column B. The column th the third direct third part of the directions to calculate the natural log data and the inverse data. We have to use the column B data, which is the molarity data. So for column C, which is going to be the natural log of our chemical. In the first 
cell blank, which is here, we're going to type the equal sign and then LN parentheses. And then you go over and you tap on the data for the chemical because you want the natural log of that chemical. And so that is the chemical concentration. When I hit enter, it automatically pops up autofill suggested. And yes, I do want this. So I'm going to click enter and it automatically populates the rest of the data. So what this has what this is, is this is the natural log. Each one of these is the natural log of the molarity that you see in column B. And so this 1.3862, this is the natural log of B2. The next one is natural log of the data in B3, the data in B4, the data in B5. So it goes on down until the end of our data. Column D will do the same thing, but we want it to calculate the inverse of the molarity data. And so if you look at the directions, we are going to type equals. It's right here. It says for column D in the first blank, type equals and then one divided by. So I typed equals one and then the divided by. And then I'm going to go over to the molarity data and click that and then hit enter. And once again, it says autofill. Yes, we want to. Each of these is the inverse of the concentration of our chemical. And so this creates all the data that we need. With this data, we want to create a plot. The plot for each, the X axis is going to be time. So to do the first plot, you're going to choose the time data is X, so you have to choose that first. So you're going to highlight all of X or all of A. So I'm going to click on the A column and then I'm going to use the control button, hold it down and then column B. And I'm going to click on it and so it highlighted that. With a Mac, I think you have to hit the command button to highlight both of them, but you have to highlight time first and then the natural log data. That's the X value and the Y value. Then you go up to insert and you go down to chart. Automatically, it will insert a column chart, but you want to, for type, you're going to go down and choose scatter. So we want a scatter plot. And I want to take a look at this and close this out. And this looks, I'm trying to see if it's linear. So it looks pretty linear, but before we do anything, we're going to do the other one so we can compare these two. So I'm going to choose A again, but my next graph, it's going to be time versus the inverse. And so I'm going to choose that one and I'm going to insert chart. And this one did do go ahead and, and do a scatter plot. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger so I can see both of these at the same time. So I'm going to move this over so I can see both of these. So if we're not really sure which one's linear, then what we can do is we can insert a trend line. Okay, so I'm going to click on this, click on the data. So double click on the data and up pops the chart editor. And we want to go down under the series, we want to go down and choose trend line. And I want to see if this looks linear. And to me, 
this does not look linear because the line does not go through all the dots. So I'm going to go over to this one and double click on the dots and up pops the chart editor and I want to add the trend line. So you choose the trend line. And this looks like. The line goes through all the data, so this looks linear. And so we wanted the chart that was linear, and so this chart here that's linear. This was our first chart. We'll go back to it in just a minute. We're going to add a label. Just use the and we're going to put the equation. And so this right here, we have the natural log of the C4H8 equals and then negative 1.19 E, which is times 10 to the negative 4 times X and the X is time plus 1.39 and 1.39 is our Y intercept. So this is our linear equation. So this is the one that's linear, which is the natural log. The one that is the inverse is not linear. So this one is not any good. So I'm just going to delete this chart that's not linear. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we can go back to the directions. OK, so we. The graph that is linear represents the correct relationship between time versus the chemical. It's first order or second order. So since our natural log equation was the one that's linear, this means that our first order data was the one that's linear. So our rate law is first order. So what this means is that since we know that it's first order, we can now write the rate law, which would be rate equals K, which is the rate constant, times C4H8 raised to the first power because it's first order. And then the reason we displayed the equation on the linear equation on the chart is we want this number right here, which is the slope and the slope, the slope as a positive value. So if you see it negative. The positive value of that slope is the rate constant for the reaction. So this reaction, the rate constant would be 1.19 times 10 to the negative four and the units would be seconds to the negative one. So this. This program allows us to quickly take our data and calculate the natural log and the inverse of the rate of the um, concentration in order to see which set of data would be linear so we can decide if our rate law is first order or second order. We can then it automatically will save it and we can share this data onto Moodle so that it can be submitted.